Good morning. Thank you for participating in today's webinar, Enhancing Sales Team Productivity with AI. A little about Forvis Mazar. Forvis Mazar is an independent member of Forvis Mazar Global, a leading global professional services network. Ranked among the largest public accounting firms in the US, our team members are dedicated to providing an unmatched client experience through the delivery of assurance, tax, and consulting services. As part of the consulting services, Business Technology Services provides analysis, design, implementation, upgrade, training, and support services for accounting and ERP systems and sales and marketing CRM systems, in addition to other digital transformation and advanced technology services. At a glance, this is a snapshot of the Microsoft practice at Forbes Mazar. Today, we will be focusing on Microsoft Dynamics 365 CRM and Copilot. Our presenter today is Tom Giuali. Tom is a senior managing consultant at Forbes Mazar and also is a Microsoft certified professional. He specializes in Microsoft Dynamics 365 sales, field service, Power Automate, and Power BI. He has 10 years of experience working with CRM software, conducting analysis, design, and implementation projects, and previously worked as a CRM admin. He helps clients design their CRM systems to fit their business needs, promote user adoption, and streamline business processes. Again, thank you for participating in today's webinar. Now I will turn over the presentation to Tom. All right, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Appreciate that you uh, joining us today and taking your time to learn a little bit more about how we can enhance our sales team productivity using AI and Copilot within Microsoft Dynamics CRM. Uh, to start off with, we're going to actually be talking about two slightly different systems um, and applications, even though they both sound very similar and are both going to be used to help out our sales team. One of them is Copilot for sales. That's the one that's going to connect to our CRM platform and um, basically live within things like Teams, Outlook, and some of those other programs and utilize our CRM data in order to find more information about our customers and sales. The other one is called Copilot for Dynamics 365 Sales. That's the portion that's actually built into our model-driven apps within CRM that uses Copilot in order to summarize records and do a number of other actions. So as you're taking a look, if you are hoping to go and implement this in your organizations, and we'll talk a little bit about that setup here today. Uh, if you're looking for the right search terms in the documentation, you'll want to remember these two names. Very similar, but they are two different uh, kind of applications of the Copilot program. Now, before we get started, I do want to try and get a sense here of, um, hopefully we have a survey question of whether or not your organization is currently using Copilot or any other sort of AI functionality in order to help out the sales team. Um, hopefully this gives us a sense of whether folks are just starting to dip their toes into some of this functionality um, or whether or not it's brand new to you. So that question should be popping up right here on your screen. Um, we'll give everyone about a minute to uh, answer that. Um, as we're doing so, I think one of the things that we've seen just from our side as a partner and working with our different clients is I would say an overall excitement about what Copilot can do and how it can hopefully help uh, different folks within the organization. But that excitement is also paired up with almost a little bit of an overload of where do we even start, right? It's one of those things as we talk about Copilot AI where it feels like it can do everything. So how do you even decide on anything that you should be using it for? Um, the point of this presentation as we're going through is to hopefully show you some actual applications when it comes specifically to sales of how Copilot can help out your folks um, to hopefully give you a couple of ideas of maybe a few little areas that you can target if you're new to Copilot or if you are using it, maybe where you can expand it out so that you can start to get folks in and more comfortable. Um, it's, it's definitely a situation where you could jump straight into the deep end, uh, but you're probably better off testing the water a little bit first, and we'll talk through that a little bit later. So taking a look at the results, it looks like we do have about 29% that are currently using it, uh, with the remainder either not using it or not sure. So that about tracks with what I would expect um, and what we've seen so far. So let's go ahead and jump right into it, and we're going to talk first about Copilot for Sales. So this is that part of the application that actually surfaces up within Teams and Outlook. 
and then reaches into your CRM and the other applications in order to help augment what your staff are doing. So real quick overview first, Copilot for sales was previously called Sales Copilot. So again, when we're talking about documentation, you're trying to see where these things are and looking them up on Microsoft's site, you will see these names changing on occasion. Um, I would just say as a general rule of thumb, probably expect them to change again at some point uh, as the kind of landscape of all of this keeps shifting around. You'll probably see things starting to get packaged up in maybe slightly different ways or names updating. And that's pretty typical for um, somewhat new functionality like this. But Copilot for Sales is there to, like I said, really live within primarily three different applications to help your sales team get ready for meetings, understand what's happening, and see more recent activities. So Copilot for Sales is going to live within Microsoft Outlook, where it's going to be able to access uh, things like calendar invites, contacts, and email messages. Within Teams, uh, where we can actually have it participate within those team meetings in order to do things like record, analyze, get insights, summaries, action items that need to happen. And then finally, in Microsoft Word. And this is where it'll actually help your sales team members prepare for meetings and start getting some notes and documentation in place. So let's take a look at a few of these different examples and really see how Copilot can integrate and live within these applications to help your sellers really where they live and where they spend most of their days, I gather up some of those insights. Now, when we do the installation process, there are a couple of different ways that this can occur. Um, you can do an admin deployment. So that means that as an administrator, whether that's a Microsoft 365 administrator or Teams administrator, depending on which part of your tenant you're deploying this to, you can actually essentially deploy and push this out to specific users within your organization or the entire organization. Uh, you go into your admin centers, you find the app, you essentially just enable it and add it in through the app. And within about 48 hours, you should see that pushed out to everyone within your organization that you specified should have access. Users do have the ability to go out to the app store themselves essentially and find and install these applications. However, when they do that, there's going to be a limited set of features that are available to them. So they're gonna be able to get some of the bells and whistles, but not everything. And part of that is just a data governance, right? We wanna make sure that organizations have the tools to be able to control to an extent how, what features and how people are using Copilot to make sure that it can be rolled out for your organization in a thoughtful, considerate way. Um, so ideally, admin deployed is going to be what you want to take a look for and so you'll need to make sure you work with your IT team um, and those administrators to update those settings. So let's start off talking about Outlook which is uh, for better or worse typically something that almost all of us are in at all times throughout the day. Um, some of you may be familiar if you've been using Microsoft Dynamics CRM for a while with the old CRM Outlook um, it's been out there for a while. I'm going to forget when it was actually first deployed out. But that old app gave you the ability to track emails, uh, look up contacts, uh, track an email to either a contact or an opportunity, uh, do a lot of those kind of basic features. The Copilot for Sales app within the new Outlook has almost all of that same functionality. And we'll actually see a, a grid later that goes through the differences between that. But it basically covers all of that same old functionality and adds a whole lot of new bells and whistles directly into it. You'll see in the screenshot on the right, once this has been deployed and out, it essentially has an extra button anytime you're in an email and it pops it open into a side pane within your Outlook. From this um, tool, what we're able to do is, like mentioned, same thing with the old Outlook. We can connect and find CRM records. So the tool will go and check the email addresses and will find any of the contacts in your CRM that are a part of that email chain. You can create and edit new contacts directly from there without having to go into your CRM. Uh, we can control as an admin whether or not people are able to create those records through Outlook or not. Um, more importantly, what you can do is not only track that email, which is essentially creating a copy of the email as an activity within your CRM, but one of my favorite things is you can actually save a summary. So uh, traditionally, and anyone who's been using the Outlook 
um, app for a while and, and is in an organization that tracks emails a lot. What happens sometimes is you track an email to a contact or an opportunity and it's great and you've got it. But then there are maybe 20 more emails in that chain of information going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And it's great to gather all that information. But what happened was every time a new email came in and it was tracked, that new email activity contained the entire email chain underneath it, right? Each one was kind of its own separate activity and instance. What Copilot for Sales is able to do in utilizing AI and, and the, the large language model that Copilot does is you can actually take a summary of an entire email chain, right? So I was out of the office for a week, I came back and here's a new email chain with a request and it's 10 emails long. Rather than going through and starting at the bottom and working through all of it, there's an easy button right on this Copilot for Sales that allows you to say, summarize this email for me. It's going to pull out important information, who has certain action items that need to be completed, and give you a nice little summary, you know, about uh, 500 characters or so around there of what happened within that email chain. Even better is that you can then take that email summary and you can save it as a note in your CRM record. So rather than tracking every single specific email, which sometimes can be unwieldy to go back through and review as you're taking a look at those activities later within CRM, having that summary is a great way to be able to get a good snapshot into really what the point and the overall view of the conversation was. And then you can always go back to those activities later to get more information. So that's one that I love having access to that tool and being able to do it. Um, and it really makes life a lot easier for some of those email chains that are flying back and forth. Of course, in addition to that, you can also use Copilot to draft emails and create appointments. So uh, we'll see an example of this later on where you can have Copilot essentially say, you know, send a response back to uh, this particular person, uh, grab my appointments from my calendar to see open times for us to have a meeting, um, allows you to essentially pre-draft emails to do about 80% of that work for you as the user. So all you have to do is tweak and update as it gets sent out. Now, a few extra things that it'll allow you to do in here, of course, is in addition to finding the contact and or the opportunity um, that is linked in CRM to this particular person that sent you the email, you can also see recent and upcoming activities. So it'll point out to you if you have an appointment with this person at some point in the near future, or possibly if someone else in your organization just had a phone call or appointment with them. Um, and of course, you can then also even easily copy a link directly out to the CRM record without having to go into CRM yourself. So you can share it out to Teams, a chat, send it out in an email so that other people have access to it. So here's an example of some of those uh, AI capabilities and being able to generate emails. So um, on the right hand side, this is a little bit of that summary email that we just mentioned. So this is going through and pulling out and actually tagging contacts, uh, different parts of the message, action items, back and forth. Um, it's really good about pulling out kind of numbers and, and actions and things that have to happen. From there, you'll see at the bottom, we have this little option that says Ask Copilot 2. And the first thing it has is draft an email. Uh, there are a few other options that you can have on there. Basically, you can have it uh, review action items, uh, suggest a meeting, suggest a phone call. There's a few predefined options that are available. But if you do draft an email, you can have it draft an email and you give it a prompt. Uh, if you've done any other uh, co-pilot large language models, prompts are a very important thing to understand. And what that prompt allows you to do is say, you know, let them know, you know, let Kenny Smith know that I'm, I'll be reviewing the proposal and I'll follow up soon. And it'll draft an email that's a little bit longer, right? A little bit more formal than what you would put in for the draft and then present it to you as a, as a possible draft. From there, you can refine your prompt, right? You can add in additional information. You can ask it to regenerate at any time, or you can even ask it to do things like change the tone of the email. So maybe make it more professional, uh, make it a little bit shorter, add in something a little bit longer, you know, make it longer and ask them how their family is doing. You can add in additional stuff to this prompt and change the tone and have it kind of regenerate and recreate because it is taking a look at the information Copilot is and regenerating that information every single time you enter in the prompt. 
any time that the copilot is going to be providing you information or details, uh, we do want to point out it gives you these little icons right here. So you'll see like the number one, two, three. This essentially links you to the source. It's like a reference at the bottom of a Wikipedia article or encyclopedia where you can click on this and it'll show you exactly where it got this information from. Um, that's an important point. And I would say as organizations start utilizing this tool, you wanna make sure that you are checking things, right? As it's learning, see where it got it from, understand why it's generating the type of uh, output from a prompt that it is. Because while it's really good at understanding natural language and, and extracting those important details, it's not perfect. And like any technology, it not only helps us do things quicker and faster and improve on them, but you know, from the user side, we also have to learn a little bit more about how to work with it and how to make it even more efficient and accurate. A um, little bit of give and take between both Copilot and the user. Um, other than that, of course, this Copilot for sales, you can do things like opportunity summaries, summarize the last meeting, um, that uh, email summary and email thread as well. Um, basically gives you all of your information that you might need right there in a side pane directly within your outlook window. So anytime we talk about deploying or pushing out a CRM application, you know, one of the biggest things that we do when it comes to helping enable sellers and understanding how to get people to utilize CRM, sometimes the answer is don't make them go separately out to CRM, right? Take the information that's there and bring it into where they're working on a normal basis so that it's a very integrated and tightly used part of their day-to-day -day life. And that's a great way to really help improve um, your user adoption. If you're thinking about something like summarizing the last meeting or um, seeing upcoming activities, you know that only works if people are actually putting activities into your CRM application or they're creating contacts or they're creating opportunities. So this can also be a tool that you can use to show people, right, by putting information into your CRM, these are all the benefits that you get. This is how it helps you in understanding and meeting your sales targets and goals and making sure that your life is as easy as possible, right, as you're going through and working through sales. So this right here is a, is a table that's going to go through and outline really just the differences between the old D365 app for Outlook versus the new Copilot for sales. That D365 app for Outlook is still available. It's there, you can utilize it. What you will notice though, is that um, the new Copilot for sales basically supports almost everything that the old one does and it includes these new bells and whistles. So anytime that I'm working with a client or an organization I usually say go for the new one unless you have a really good reason that you you want to not do that. Generally speaking, that new Copilot for Sales app is going to be your best bet. The few things that it does not do, delegate access, mobile access, um, and applying email templates from within there um, are items that I would expect are going to be added in at some point here. Uh, and you can see all of those extra things, the conversation summary, content prompt, um, uh, opportunity summaries, things like that, are all things that are only available within the new Copilot for sales. So moving past Outlook at this point, probably to the application that a lot of us live in second most outside of Outlook is Teams. So Copilot for sales can be added into your Teams meetings, and it really offers a whole suite of additional functionality. Um, in order to help improve not only the meeting experience itself, but also the analysis afterwards and the outcomes. So when you've enabled Copilot for Sales within Microsoft Teams, the Copilot for Sales kind of tool or app is going to be added to any Teams meeting when you have at least one external participant invited. So it's not going to do it when you're just doing an internal meeting. It does look for someone external coming into it. And there are a couple of settings as you're creating a meeting. You want to make sure that it, the Copilot for Sales is set to transcribe that meeting. Uh, that takes any um, conversation, right? Any speech that's being spoken, transcribes it into your official transcript, which you can always download later. But that transcript is then used for insights, and the meeting organizer can then manually add that app into the meeting as needed. So once you get into the meeting, 
What Copilot for Sales do is allows you to use a meeting preparation card. So that means it can pull in information about the meeting itself, of course, but also your participants, recent communication that you've had with them, open tasks in CRM, other related records, very similar to what Outlook was doing, where it essentially finds that contact and that meeting and appointment, and it kind of sends out little feelers to say, what other related items do we have that we need to know about? Um, again, if you're going into a meeting with someone, with a client, it's a sales meeting you're pushing through, it's always helpful to know that, hey, Bob talked to them three days ago, and he mentioned that they were really interested in this particular product. Um, that type of information, right, that related info, getting everyone onto the same page is really, really valuable when it comes down to um, preparing, getting ready for sales meetings. What the transcript will also do, and we'll see a screenshot in a couple of slides here, is it's actually going to be, as the meeting is going through, it's going to be um, taking a look at the text and that transcript, and it's going to be analyzing and tagging and searching for information. So let's say I'm talking to a client and I mentioned that, um, right, you're selling me coffee machines, and I mentioned that, well, I've had a, a Keurig, or I've had brand X for five years, and this is how I feel about it. What the co-pilot for sales in Microsoft Teams might do is essentially pull and say, oh, I heard this brand name, here's some information about that brand, right? Um, I see this a lot of times as we're talking to clients about software systems. They'll say, oh, I use X, or we use Y to do this. Uh, as we're kind of getting a, a look at the landscape. And I'm always going out and Googling these different applications, right? These different tools to kind of understand what are they, what do they do? Copilot for sales is able to pull that information straight into the meeting so I can very quickly and easily just get that info while we're having the conversation and learn more about it. And then again, to my point before, pulling information in from CRM so that it makes it easier for people to use and update it, you can view and edit those records in CRM from within the Teams meeting. Finally, after a meeting. So once you get through and the meeting is done, uh, this is where you can do some of your suggested follow-up. So the tool is gonna take a look through and say, you know, Tom mentioned that he would follow up with a list of uh, different coffee brands that he really enjoys. Uh, Susie asked about, um, you know, what the different capacities in gallons are for industrial size coffee makers. It's going to go through and it's going to pull up those action items, tasks. It's going to analyze and take a look at who was talking the most during the meeting. You know, how often was it going back and forth? Were there a lot of delays? Um, longest monologue. Um, I probably, just knowing myself, would win a lot when it comes down to who got the longest monologue in a meeting. Um, and then, of course, it's going to pull out some of those different keywords. So the idea behind this, in a nutshell, is that a lot of information happens during meetings. I think a lot of us have gotten good at taking notes throughout those meetings, and this won't replace paying attention in your sales meetings, taking notes, doing some of that follow-up, but it's that extra check that comes in to make sure, hey, did you catch this part, right? Someone asked for this follow-up item, and then it makes it very easy for us to say, here's this follow-up request. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to... Um, create a task in CRM for this and assign it out to a specific person. And that allows us to make sure that we're not kind of losing the thread and what we need to be doing. Um, we have a couple questions in the chat. I was going to go to the next question, then maybe answer the questions in the chat while, while that's being answered. Does that work? Sounds good. OK. So um, general question, again, get a sense. How many CRM users does your organization have? Um, gave you a couple of different buckets just to get a sense of the size. So I did have a couple questions in the chat. Um, first one was asking about if you should remove the D365 Outlook app if you already use Copilot for sales. Uh, from a technical perspective, I don't think there's any conflict between having the two. So I think you're fine, especially if you're in an organization that's just starting to roll out uh, the new tool. From a user perspective, um, I, I guess it depends on how comfortable your users are with knowing the difference between the two and the functionality between the two. Um, I might recommend that you, you do remove that legacy app once you have the new one in, just so that you make sure that users are, you know, kind of push them towards that new functionality and using some of the new tools. Um, another question that we had was, um, using Copilot for Sales for internal meetings. So the tool is automatically added for meetings where you have an external uh, 
participant that's coming in, you can manually add that out to your team meeting. And so you can do that for some of those internal meetings. It's just not something that's automatic as it comes through. Take a look at the survey responses here. Uh, pretty even mix between a uh, number of sales organizations from uh, some of our smaller orgs of zero to 10 users all the way up to more than 50. Um, I think one of the exciting things about these tools is that you don't have to be a huge organization in order to take advantage of them because the deployment is pretty straightforward and easy. And a lot of these tools are built in and it kind of learns as it goes. You don't necessarily need a huge infrastructure in order to enable this. You really just need a plan, right? Of who you're going to push it out to and where you're going to go. Two more quick slides here. Um, and then we're going to jump into kind of using Copilot within Microsoft Dynamics CRM itself. But this is a screenshot of what I wanted to show you, what the team's functionality looks like. So what you'll notice is that we have our meeting up top here. It's called uh, RFP Review for Wingtip Toys. And you've got kind of your standard tabs that you'll see in a lot of different meetings. But now you'll see that we have a tab called Recap, Recordings and Transcripts, as well as Sales Copilot. What this recap is showing after the meeting is done is, first of all, a recording of your meeting, as well as a transcript that's included within that. But then you'll see at the bottom, what it's done is it's analyzed and you're able to see based off of kind of who's here, who is speaking at any given time throughout the meeting, what topics were covered throughout that meeting, engagement within the meeting itself. And then over on the right hand side is where we see some of that kind of follow up actions that are being determined. So that is, what are the actions that need to be happening after a meeting? In this case, right, do we want to send a summary email? which you can have Copilot draft an email, make your tweaks, send it right out. What are the suggested follow-ups for this meeting? So in this case, Daisy's gonna send an email out with a new quote, Daisy and Alberto are gonna meet on Friday. The system's going to give you the opportunity to create tasks within Microsoft Dynamics CRM in order to do these different actions. And then you'll see an overview of some of the different questions that came up during the meeting. Um, having all of this information as your follow-up, right? getting a summary, making sure you've got follow-up tasks, who was talking when, what was their engagement. All of this is meant to essentially enrich and give additional insights to your sales team to help them more effectively do their job. Um, as they say, right, knowledge is power. Picture a star going across my screen right now. Knowledge is power, right? The more that you know, the more you can pull out, the more you can make sure that you don't miss something in some of these meetings or conversations the better your sales team is going to be able to do in talking to your customers and closing their deals and sales and providing really effective customer service and uh, sales service to their different customers. And then finally, last one, I, I don't have a ton on this because it really, this, this depends a lot on, on different pieces of information, but that's uh, Copilot for sales within Word. So we talked about Outlook, talked about Teams, now we also have within Word. Um, what you can do within Microsoft Word for Copilot for Sales is have it actually draft up preparation notes for a sales meeting. So what this is going to do is basically give you the opportunity to say who all is participating, what's the summary of the opportunities, so what kind of information and notes do we already have in our CRM application? Do we have any open tasks that still need to be done? Have we had recent meetings? And what are the highlights or follow-up items from those meetings? summary of recent emails that have been sent regarding this opportunity and then any other related records right you might have a sales call with a customer it's good to know that they have two support cases that are open with us and you want to be able to know and see that so if they ask you hey right i, I emailed in two days ago because i needed help with something have you you know gotten a response it's not catching you off guard right you've got that information again pulling out grabbing those important pieces of information to make sure that you have that full picture. Um, so Word, this is where you'll see you're able to kind of do that draft and that prep as it's coming through. So that was your, your kind of first section, right? This is where Copilot is working with CRM data, but it's living within Outlook, Teams, and Word. Now what we're going to be doing is we're gonna be kind of switching this and looking at Copilot's 
Copilot for Dynamics 365 Sales. So these are the tools and the abilities that you have within your Microsoft Dynamics CRM application um, in order to perform some of these similar functions. Um, one of the last things that I will say, because I, I saw a question on it and I forgot to note it earlier, is that when we talk about Copilot for Sales and Outlook, uh, one of the other big things that you can do is number one, you can connect to multiple CRM organizations, which you were not able to do in the Classic app, but you can also connect it to a Salesforce instance. So that Outlook functionality is not Microsoft Dynamics CRM specific. You can utilize it with Salesforce and get a lot of that same functionality and a lot of those same tools if you are a Salesforce organization as well. So I did want to point that out because it's, it's an important distinction. And I know that I, I tend to focus on Dynamics CRM since that's what I do a lot, but that functionality is there for Salesforce as well. So let's talk about though, shifting from that into Microsoft Dynamics CRM and what this tool allows us to do. So first of all, when it comes to setup, as opposed to being more in your different admin centers for the setup, like those other tools were, a lot of the settings for Copilot and Dynamics 365 sales is going to happen within Dynamics CRM itself. So you do need to make sure that you have a system administrator or set up uh, users in order to utilize this functionality. You need, you need to have sales premium or sales enterprise licenses, but Copilot comes with those licenses. There is no additional cost. It's part of your premium or enterprise sales licenses. And then in order to do that setup, you go into your sales hub model driven app, you go to app settings, general settings, and there's a whole section just for Copilot. Um, so that allows you to turn on different pieces of functionality. It's pretty good in that if you have requirements in order to make certain features work, it'll kind of tell you about that to make sure you have it turned on. For example, if you're going to be doing your uh, asking for a summary of recent changes, which we'll see here in a minute, you need to make sure that auditing is turned on for your organization and for your opportunity table. If it's not on, it's going to warn you about that or Dataverse search as another example. Um, Dataverse search is that large search box that appears in the very top of your dynamic CRM instance, as opposed to the smaller table specific search that you might see. Um, some of those kind of back end features are required in order for this functionality to work. So this settings window will really walk through that with you, make sure that you know, you've got everything set and going. It's pretty user friendly um, when it comes down to it. A lot of what we see is also going to be automatically deployed if you use the Sales Hub app. So that's the Microsoft provided um, model driven app for the sales team. However, um, what you can do is you can also add a lot of this functionality to your custom apps. So if you have some custom model driven apps within your organization that you have created, you can add these co-pilot widgets and this functionality to those different apps. Some of them will come in automatically, some you have to manually add in, um, but you are not locked into just the sales hub model driven app to use these. You really can push this really throughout a lot of different portions of CRM. So first thing that we're gonna talk about is record summarization. So what this does is you have a side pane that's going to show up within Dynamics and it allows you to start asking questions or prompts. And one of them that you can do is give me a summary of opportunity X or opportunity Y. And what it's going to do is it's going to pull up a summary very similar to what you see over here on the right hand side. So that's going to include information like your estimated revenue and close date, what's the account it's for, what was recent information in terms of how many activities have there been, um, what's the history of this client with us. Uh, who's making updates on this record? You know, if you have more than one salesperson who's going in and updating records, who was it that last did an update on here? And then you can pull information depending on what your organization uses in terms of related records. If you use the product catalog and you list prices under the opportunity, you can see a summary of that information. If you move all the way into quotes within CRM, so you go from an opportunity to a quote, you can see insights from your quotes. If you utilize competitors, right, there's a grid built into your opportunity where you can list out competitors for a given opportunity. You can see information from there. Um, I think what's most important to understand about this summary is, is a couple key points. 
Number one is that there are settings that you can actually go through and update where you are going to basically determine what is your key information, right? What are the fields that you care about that your organization uses and that you want to have included within the summary? Uh, that means that it can be not only out of box fields, but also custom fields if you have added in to your CRM organization. So you can say these are the five fields, these are the 10 fields that we care about, right? These are the most important ones for us. So that is an actual configuration setting where you're telling Copilot, this is what I want you to focus on. The other really key point when it comes down to this is the understanding that what Copilot provides back to you is only as good as the information that you have. Right? If you don't track competitor information within your CRM application, it's not going to be able to pull anything back. Right? If you're not using products, it can't pull it back. If half these fields are blank because the salesperson just knows what's in there, right, but they're not logging it within their CRM, it's not going to be able to get that info back. So being able to really work with your sales team to make sure that they're filling in information, they're populating what they need to do, um, it's helping them understand that the more that they put into this, the better it is that it's going to be coming out here. Uh, the other thing that I think is important to note is, you know, understanding when I first took a look at some of this info and I first took a look at this functionality, and this goes a little bit towards the rollout conversation. You know, my first thought was, okay, that's neat, but is it going to take me longer to type in a prompt that says, give me a summary for this opportunity than it will for me to just look at all those specific fields, right? I've been working in CRM for a long time. It's really quick for me to add a column, switch a filter, check related records and go through that. I think where the real potential and the power and the benefit of Copilot lays is that it's not, it's opening up CRM for people who don't work the way that we often do, those of us who have been living in CRM for years and years and years. A, Oftentimes, a typical user isn't going to want to go in and change the columns on their advanced find or switch the filters or do groupings or go in and search on five different tabs for info. A lot of times, users just want to be able to say, what's the latest that's going on with this information? Um, and that's really what Copilot provides is a little bit more user-friendly, natural language, just natural feeling way to get this type of information out um, and make it easier for users to see that information from CRM. Uh, you also have the ability, uh, so that was kind of opportunities or where you see a lot more of those summaries. Um, leads, of course, we can enrich lead information based off of Copilot. Uh, very similar to searching for accounts and contacts, which is something that everyone's familiar that Dynamics CRM does. But what this will do is take it a little bit further. So it not only will search before you qualify a lead for that related contact based off of an email address, but it'll also take a look at things like company name and account. It'll pull up recent news sources based off of Bing. If you have LinkedIn Sales Navigator, which connects your dynamic CRM instance to LinkedIn data, it'll even go in and basically check and try and find related LinkedIn profiles. Again, anything to help your sales team get the edge, get more information, so they go into those sales meetings and those calls. A little bit less of a cold call, we'll call it a, a warm call, right? They've got a little bit more info. Um, they hopefully know a little bit more before they start having that conversation. So next polling question here, um, as we run through, and we've got a few more things to kind of look through as we talk about this, but when we start talking about Copilot for sales, what do you find the most exciting part of this so far? The Outlook functionality, the Teams functionality, or what you've seen so far in terms of the CRM functionality that's going into there? I think one of the exciting things as we, we look at this, right, is that what we have now in terms of functionality will, will grow, will increase. I think we've seen an exponential growth in the type of functionality and how things are in here. And as Microsoft sees how folks are using the application, where it's helpful, where it's not, where they need to tweak, they've really been putting a lot of resources and a lot of time into making those updates and changes. So already, like the Teams functionality is fantastic compared to, you know, if you would have looked six months ago, uh, what was there and available. Tom, while you read yeah. through, I think there is an unanswered question, but we did have um, Catherine write in um, and she said, I leveraged the transcript option in Teams yesterday. 
Um, the follow-up tasks it created were spot on, as well as not having to take notes during the conversation was a huge time saver. I was able to stay engaged throughout the conversation without trying to keep up on notes and action items. The other cool feature was the speaker transcript. Um, mm -hmm. Catherine could immediately jump back to the speaker sections if she wanted to recall what was said. So cool That's use case there. I love it. And that's yeah. exactly, you know, and like I said, I feel like so, so many times a lot of us, you know, we've, we've gotten pretty good at taking notes and, and going through things in meetings. You always miss stuff. You go back to your bullet points afterwards and you just think, what was I even talking about here in my own notes, right? What did I mean by this? And so having that backup, Catherine, thank you for that that insight because I agree. It's it's a game changer just in terms of keeping us, keeping us going, you know? Yeah. Do you want to take that question from Paul? Um, can Copilot for Sales in Teams be enabled for internal meetings ad hoc? We have a pre-customer meeting engineering reviews that results in action items to address in external meetings. Yes, so you can add that Copilot for Sales app into any meeting. It's only automatically added to meetings with external customers. So yes, you should be able to add that in for your internal meeting. Uh, do the transcript and the follow-up as it goes through. Um, I know that I also saw another question that is asked about kind of where do the transcripts live and where is that info? Um, unless it's changed, I believe a lot of the recordings that you see for the Teams meetings and what goes through, um, a lot of them do live out in um, Microsoft Stream, it's called. It's kind of like a kind of like an internal YouTube, I guess, if you've never actually gone out to the stream site as, as part of your organization. Uh, but I do know that transcripts are always available there for meeting recordings. And that's where I've, um, even before co uh, the Copilot Teams integration, I would sometimes go get the transcript from a meeting and then put it into Copilot myself and say, can you generate a summary and do that? So a few extra steps, but same result. Um, so Microsoft Stream, if anyone is looking, uh, is a good place to check for some of those meeting recordings and transcripts. All right, so pretty evenly split. I agree with this. I, I think Teams is the neatest, right? It feels the most futuristic. Day to day, the, the Outlook and CRM functionality, um, I think is, has been a good game changer for a lot of folks. All right, so let's jump into a few more things on, on dynamic CRM um, in our last few minutes here um, and take a look at what we can do. So uh, first one that we do have here are now that we're actually in a record, uh, this is going to work for just about any record where you have a timeline, right? And the timeline is where you have activities that are tracked underneath the customer. You have your timeline highlights. So what this will do is every time you open up that record, or refresh your page, it's going to go in, it's gonna grab all of those child activities and it's going to show you some different highlights. Are there recent phone calls, appointments, action items, tasks, um, anything that you need to know that comes out of that timeline? Because again, sometimes looking through the huge list is, is tricky and you don't always get a good piece of information. So those timeline highlights will automatically generate, gives you a great overview and at least a good general uh, understanding of what's happening with the activities. As with anything that you see within Copilot, it's when it generates something, you can always ask it to regenerate that content. In theory, it should be pretty much the same, uh, but it's never exactly the same, right? As it goes through, it's trying to pull out relevant information and it does analyze and look at things slightly different each time. Like I said, they're not pre-canned responses to these things. It is that generative kind of uh, large language model AI. And so it's freshly analyzing it every time it generates that summary. In addition to your timeline summary, you're going to see on some of these other records, things uh, like other record summaries. In this case, we have a case, which again, when you're talking about your sales team, uh, if you are also an organization that provides cases and service within your CRM, being able to quickly and easily as a sales team member, get a summary of what was happening, who's had communication, what the status is, what the issue was, is hugely valuable to making sure that your client feels like you know, you're not segmented into different groups. Support does one thing, sales does another. You wanna get your entire organization the same set of data and working in a very similar way. Um, so those case summaries are there. We have the same thing for work orders and field service. And so you can get work order summaries that show which technician was out there and you know when they went out and what the status is, they have to go back again. 
um, these summaries are great. It's a great, quick, easy way to get it. And what I also love about it is that you can also just hit that copy button and it's going to copy that text. So if you need to throw it into an email or a chat or anything else, um, that makes it available to you. The recent changes option. So this allows you to put a prompt into that Copilot pane that says, what's new with my sales records? Or what has been newly assigned? Or what's changed for Opportunity ABC? This utilizes, um, again, those specific fields that we set within the configuration about what we want to focus on. It'll take a look at you know recent records or recent changes that have occurred, and it'll give you a quick little list uh, summary of information. Again, it's something if we talk about let's say the what's changed on this, you know this is one of those things where traditionally as a CRM admin I would say well someone can just go to the audit log and they can see what changed. Um, the audit log is not user friendly. It's not something you know some organizations users can't even see the audit log, um, but it's not the the easiest. Uh, window to decipher if you're not used to it. This gives a great user-friendly way for you to be able to go in and say, right, oh, here's what changed. We switched up the parent account, the value changed, and now our estimated close date was updated. Um, and it gives a nice, quick um, set of information for it. Uh, same thing with the you know newly assigned to me. Yeah, you could do a filter, right? What's been modified in the past five days is assigned to me. But this really makes it a lot easier, essentially, for a user to go through and find that information. Content recommendations. So I do want to spend a, a, a minute or two on this one because it is really important. And this is where you start branching out a lot more with Copilot uh, from within CRM into kind of your other tools and applications. So the prompt that you would go into this is you're able to say, show me related files for this opportunity or show me related files to this account. And what the system will do is it will actually go out to your SharePoint folders and it's going to pull up a list of those related records. And when we talk about related records, we're talking about the out of box SharePoint integration and the files that have been uploaded to that particular record or to the related records for it. So in this case, right, if we're saying show me stuff about this particular product, it's going to give it you know, anything that's been tied to that product or accounts associated with the record that we're on. Um, we can also get information out of SharePoint or get answers from SharePoint and Dataverse. Um, but this content recommendations, this is the thing that I want to put a little bit of a, um, a caveat or a, a, a bug in your ear about how to start looking at this and working on this. This is probably the part of Copilot where you need the most amount of kind of deliberate forethought and setup and uh, kind of careful actions to make sure that the information that's being provided is appropriate and accurate. Uh, over the years, SharePoint has been, oh, I, it's uh, sometimes it just becomes a bit of a dumping ground for documents, right? And uh, for some organizations, depending on your data retention policies, you might go into your SharePoint and just think, wow, what is all of this, right? Or how long has this been here? This is an out-of-date document, and but everyone just kind of knows you don't go to that folder anymore. We don't look at that because it's this new one we care about. Um, there's a lot of organizations where you get that institutional knowledge of where to go and what's linked and what's new and what's not. Copilot does not know that information, right? They don't know, Copilot doesn't know that you don't use this one document anymore and really you use the new one. Um, or in another sense, let's say you have a document that you're sharing in SharePoint um, that has sensitive information in it. And rather than when you shared that document with someone else, rather than hit just share with a specific user, you hit, you know, anyone with the link can access, you know, or share with everyone. You just open it up because you're like, I don't want to have to deal with this or figure out who to share it with. I'm just going to say it's open to everyone, but it's really hidden in this folder. No one ever looks there. And just the people who I send the link to are the only ones who are even going to know it's there. Copilot knows that it's there. It's going to go through and it's going to look at that. And so part of the preparation when you start talking about pulling in information from SharePoint or OneDrive or these other sources, and this goes outside of uh, Dynamics 365 CRM for sales, right? This is just Copilot in general. Having a very deliberate data governance strategy is a critical part to making sure that your information will be accurate and appropriate for the prompt that is going into it. 
Uh, Microsoft does have a couple of different tools. One of them is called Purview that will go through and help you set up a data governance strategy. But I do just want to say that is a very important part of that process is understanding what data is out there, who it's available to, uh, because while Copilot will respect the individual user's permissions, so I as a user, when I put a prompt in, it's only going to show me documents that I have access to. Um, it's great about that. The question is, do I have access to stuff that I shouldn't? That's where that data governance strategy comes in and where you really need to be careful. I'm gonna hit on a couple other items real quick here, just to make sure that we have time for you to, uh, to see them before we get to our, our final poll question here. So stay ahead, uh, Copilot for Dynamics 365 sales. This is gonna help you basically go in there and prep for future sales meetings. So let me know what do I have coming up for this meeting. It gives you a kind of combination of all the other functionality we've, we've spoken about. Here's the activity. This is the recent information from the opportunity um, that you need to know about. Here's the recent emails that we have from here. So it gives you a little bit of an overview within CRM. Uh, think of it kind of similar to what the Word functionality was doing, um, but, it, um, but it's a little bit more, right? It's in CRM, not maybe quite as robust. Um, but it'll also help you make sure that if this contact has any unanswered emails, open items, questions, action items, it's going to help make sure that you kind of stay ahead of that prior to your meeting. Um, after that, um, you, you have things like news updates, right? These are relatively straightforward ones. It uses Bing, but you can say, show me anything new about Corvus Mazars or show me new information about company X or company Y. Uh, it's going to go out there. It's going to pull that information out for you. As always with everything, validate what you have. Uh, it's usually pretty good about pulling up trustworthy sources, but you always want to make sure that it is pulling accurate information from solid sources. Uh, we've got the view and copy emails, right? So very similar to what you saw with an Outlook. Uh, what you can do in CRM, though, is you can actually turn on the ability to draft emails from within CRM in that new email option to utilize Copilot in those prompts. So very similar to what we did with an Outlook but it allows you to do it um, directly within CRM itself. You can then copy that content into an email. You can send it directly out from CRM if that's the way that you have your organization set up. And then of course you can get things like summaries and other information from emails. And here's a little screenshot here of you know, writing an email to thank someone for showing their interest. Um, one of the things that I've found when it comes to drafting that content is that um, it probably does, I'd say, about 85% of the work um, for, getting, for getting things in. There's always going to be a little bit extra that I feel like a salesperson can add, uh, as well as usually some language that you want to tweak. Um, there's certain phrasing and words and just a vibe to AI-generated content still uh, that I think it's worth going in and reviewing and not just blindly going with whatever Copilot says. You should always review it before you get any further and before you send something out. Um, I expect it's just going to get better and better, so that might not be necessary nearly as often in the future. But at the moment, um, you know, look at it, make it sound a little more human, um, right? Use the prompt to get most of it done for you, and then you add a little bit more on as you go through. All right, so last polling question. Um, I don't know. Yeah. There, yeah. <laughs> Here we go. It's always easier to have the marketing person do Q4. Um, would you like to connect with a Forbes Mazar professional to learn more about Microsoft Copilot and AI technology? So um, lots of great engagement today. It is, um, you know, it's a lot. I think Tom mentioned that at first. This can be overwhelming. And, and you know, we talked about two different licensed tools today. We talked about Copilot for Sales and Dynamics 365 CRM Copilot. So excellent tools, um, lots to learn. I do want to call attention to, um, please feel free to download this presentation, um, share it with your team. Also, Tom drafted one of the related content articles. It's a high level overview of the Copilot technology. So please check out the related content. And there are a few um, questions that we're gonna tackle in these last uh, few minutes. Yeah. So from Valerie, should I be concerned about data storage capacity consumption when using Copilot? Yeah, um, 
you should, I will say as a general rule, you should always pay attention to your uh, data capacity consumption, right? Um, it's one of those things that if you're not paying attention to it, it'll sneak up on you and um, cause a number of headaches. From an actual, like what does Copilot do and impact on it? Uh, Copilot itself does not have a significant impact on your utilization of storage. Where you do see an impact is kind of that secondary one, which is in order for Copilot to grab things from documents to write, get that other information, that's where you start storing more within SharePoint than maybe would have been in network drives or you know even pers possibly personal folders right previously. And so you will start to see some of that as you go through. I actually think that in some cases, things like the email summaries are actually going to help um, if you start tracking summaries instead of emails to CRM records. Because when you track emails and it pulls in attachments and things like that, that's where you oftentimes see huge storage usage within CRM, which is CRM is about the most expensive storage medium that you have, right? It's compared to SharePoint, it's not really made to store files. So being able to save email summaries as opposed to the email message itself with that attachment included on it might actually help some organizations when it comes down to their, their utilization. Excellent. So last question, um, we'll squeeze it in from Jesse because it's related. The related documents are from all of SharePoint that the user has access to, or is the only thing... Um, Within the files with, tab. Yeah, um, yep. For the account. So when you're looking at something within CRM, um, my understanding is that it's really focusing on the items that are linked to your CRM record. So that is that formal SharePoint integration, um, what you have, not just on the account, but on the related records as well. So if you have an opportunity for that account uh, and you have document storage set up on that, that'll look through that as well. When you start talking about Copilot separately and outside of dynamic CRM, that's where you're going to see that it can go out to SharePoint and or OneDrive, and that's anywhere that the user has access and permissions. It really can go outside of there. So depends on what, what direction you're coming at it from. All right. Well, excellent. Thank you so much for the helpful tips and all the great information, and that wraps us up today. Thanks, everyone.